very, very slowly. It takes a long time. First of all, you have an idea for a movie. It may come in the form of a book, or somebody may send you a screenplay, or it may be an idea. Well, as we all know in your business and mine, a lot of people have ideas, but they can't carry them through. So you, uh, you judge the capacity of the person who brings the idea, whether if a writer, can this writer actually write for the movies? If a book, is it really something that will be easily adapted for the films or even with difficulty? Jaws, for example, when Mr. Zanuck and I read Jaws, if we had read it twice, we never would have made it because it would have been clear that it was impossible to make. But we were stuck with it and we made it. The point is that uh, you get an idea for a movie and you have to have a lot of willpower and a lot of perseverance because 99% of the time you're going to be shot down. People will think it's, it's not good. Just before we went on the air, I had a telephone call telling me what was wrong with a project that I'd submitted to a major studio for financing. I knew what was wrong with it, but I also knew what was right with it. And I'll go on and on until I've used up all the possible sources of financing. I deal with rejection badly. I don't know anyone who deals well with it. It's not comforting. It's necessary. You have to believe that the, the rejecter is very persuasive. And so there's always the tendency to believe in your defeat. And it's, it's tough. There's not only rejection at the beginning of a project, but there's rejection after you have created it. You've got to flop. The movie doesn't open. The book doesn't sell. The uh, whatever it is that you created falls dead at the marketplace. Nobody buys it. They're not coming to see it. They're not coming to the stores. Your business is on the rocks. It's very tough to deal with that. That's another kind of rejection, rejection by the buyer. But uh, rejection in the bud is just as tough. The only way I deal with it is have a lot of things in the mail so to speak. I've always got 10 or 12 or 15 projects so that the most unlikely one, the one I've despaired of, may bail me out and may bail my ego out. Dealing with established success, say Robert Redford, Paul Newman, Sylvester Stallone, Meryl Streep, working with established success in the arts is working with someone who has a very clear idea of what he or she can do, speaking of limits. Occasionally, that actor will accept a role because it permits the actor to break out of the mold. Paul Newman played in a movie that Richard Zanuck and I produced called The Verdict. He played an, a womanizing, alcoholic, out of shape lawyer down on his luck. That's contrary to everything that Paul Newman is in life. Uh, I guess my favorite movie is the verdict that I was associated with. They're all my children and Dick Zanuck's children. We love them all. They all have a very special part. It would be easy to say Jaws or The Sting because they're famous celebrated movies. The verdict had a moral base. It had something to say about redemption and it had something to say about a single man against the world and against massive forces, great wealth and great privilege. I would think, and I don't mean to be facetious, a certain naivete or innocence or unwillingness to face reality. I find that that's the key to a lot of successes. Men and women who are in business or in the arts or in, and even in the professions require a certain degree of belief in themselves when other people see no reason to believe in them. And. Uh, most great products have been made over the dead bodies of experts. I define risk as going with your gut. I, I Going in the face of adverse opinion, going it alone, having a single vision rather than hiding behind a committee, having, I think whether it was Henry Ford and his Model T, or uh, the Wright Brothers, which was a very small committee, and the airplane, or Edison and his electric light bulb. Remember that great song, I think it was written by Gershwin, they all laughed when Edison invented sound and they all laughed with, 
Henry and his buggy, that's the way people are? Well, that is the way people are. They laugh. It's that single vision that makes history.